Hey there guys, it's Heidi with AMP Home Church and welcome back. It is a like freezing cold, crazy rainy day here in Western North Carolina. Um, and we are also in the midst, I am tackling more of our bathroom renovations. So um, hopefully I'm not too grimy, but forget what you're seeing here. Let's dive in. I'm excited to wrap up Today, we've got these last couple days of the week, we've got some really cool stuff we're digging into. So I hope you guys enjoy it as well. If you're a new welcome, hopefully you will get a chance to come and check out our Facebook group. That's where all the things are kept. So what's going on, testimony nights, meet and greets, church services, all of the things, prayer, um, praises, questions, learning, so much stuff. It's all there. And that is all linked down below. Also, my mom is going to be heading up, um, going through the biblical womanhood study that I did last summer. It starts next Monday, the 25th. So if you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash biblical womanhood study, you can join her over there. So that's all of the things. Let's dive in for today. Day 59, finding true contentment. The way to contentment in each season of life is to choose to see the advantages of our present calling. Each phase of life is different with its own challenges, but also with its own rewards. The way to contentment is to see the advantages of our present calling and to trust God's purpose in our circumstances. Trust his purpose, even in circumstances that stink, that are awful, that seem completely unfair and never ending. Trust him. Scottish theologian Sinclair Ferguson writes, Christian contentment is the direct fruit of having no higher ambition than to belong to the Lord and to be totally at his disposal and the place he appoints at the time he chooses with the provision he is pleased to make. Guys, I need to write that one down. I think that's fantastic. I'm going to write it down and I'm going to put it on my control journal with my, my binder that I keep all my stuff in because I love that. Let me say it one more time. Christian contentment, right, which is what we all are striving to be to have and to be is the direct fruit of having no higher ambition than to belong to the Lord and be totally at his disposal in the place he appoints at the time he chooses with the provision he is play pleased to make. Guys, that's however much or little. We won't be fully content until we're home with our beloved. Amen. The closest we can get to contentment and to heaven while we're still here as aliens and strangers on this earth is when we come away with Jesus and get away from his substitutes. We need to tear down the idols and give God's sole occupation of the throne of our lives. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. First John 5 21 tells us true contentment comes when we're looking to only one God, the genuine article. Two perspectives from God's word. We have 1 Timothy 6.6. 6, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. 2 Corinthians 12.10 says, For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Guys, are you content in all of those things? Weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. Are you content? Perspectives from God's people, the great Charles Spurgeon said, contentment is one of the flowers of heaven, and if we would have it, it must be cultivated. It's a process. Joseph Hall said, if the sun of God's countenance shine upon me, I may well be content to be wet with some rain of affliction. So the article we're going to get into today, it is the joy and happiness of giving thanks in every circumstance, and it is on epm.org forward slash every circumstance. And let's just be for real, I think most of us are looking at circumstances today that we're probably not the most excited about, right? We've got problems and hardships and things and just a crazy world going on out there. And there's never enough time, never enough money, never enough anything, right? With, with everything. I mean, come on, most of our country, we're, st we're still trying to find toilet paper around here these days, right? So there's a lot of things, a lot of reasons that we have to be discontent, and especially in the world of social media and being on our phones and seeing what other people are doing and having and, and all of the things. It can be hard not to let that seed in and start growing of, ah, oh, I, I just, I can't be content. I don't have what I need. I don't have, you know, I don't have this. I don't have that. My, my financial situation, my living situation, relationship situations, whatever it may be. We must be content in every situation and trust in God's will. So the joy and happiness of giving thanks in every circumstance. 
Um, he, Randy Alcorn starts by saying, before I get to today's blog, I'd like to encourage you to listen to this recent interview I did with Susie Larson on her program, Live and Promise, or Live the Promise, sorry. We had a great discussion about happiness and what God's word says about our true circumstances in him. The circumstances are well worth contemplating and praising God for this Thanksgiving week. So this came out, oh, about five years ago, but here at the beginning, not that you can see it because it's just glowing. There is a link to go over and listen to that. Um, highly recommend just like yesterday we went through and then I said, you guys go listen to that sermon, which I hope you did. Now today when we get done, go listen to this. Okay. But then he goes on to say, I heard a story of someone who asked a man why he was so happy. The man picked up a binder filled with hundreds of handwritten pages and explained, every time someone does something kind for me, I write it in this book. How sweet is that? And every time I feel good about something, I write it in this book. The questioner said, I wish I could be as happy as you. If you kept a book like this, you would be. But the book is so big. I haven't had many kind things done for me, and I haven't felt good very often. I might have thought that too, if I hadn't recorded them all. I've learned to see and remember and be grateful for kindness and happiness when they come. Try it. Every time you doubt, read your entries and you'll see all you have to be grateful for. Can you guys imagine doing that? How, what a cool idea is that? Gurek, who lived from 1070 to 1157, was the abbot of Igni, wrote, O happiness of these times, O unhappiness of these times. Is it not happiness when there is such plentitude of grace and of all good things? Is it not unhappiness when there is so much ingratitude of those that are redeemed? The same is true of any time in history. Happiness and unhappiness are in direct proportion to gratitude and ingratitude. And that's what's so hard. You see people, and you guys, I love you, but I know there's some of you that you're constantly struggling with this. It's a direct result of gratitude and ingratitude. That honestly is what it is. Ephesians 5, 18 through 20 says, Be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Being Spirit-controlled is inseparable from giving thanks in everything. Whether we find ourselves having reason to celebrate or to mourn, there's never a time not to express our gratitude to God. Never. Psalm 140 verse 13 declares, Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. Giving thanks is what God's people do. It is. Gerard Manley Hopkins, who lived in 1844 to 1889, wrote, The world is charged with the grandeur of God. If we're not falling over ourselves giving thanks to God, we're not seeing God's grandeur, which brings the light of hope and happiness to a fallen world. It's all around us. We have to see it. The curse cast a shadow over happiness. Heartfelt gratitude to God is a light that cuts through the shadow. Rather than enjoying the happiness of the moment, we tend to start searching for something to make us still happier, poisoning even our happy times. Anne Voskamp writes, I don't know if I'd recommend her, but she's in here. As long as thanks is possible, then joy is always possible. Joy is always possible whenever, meaning now, wherever, meaning here. The holy grail of joy is not in some exotic location or some emotional mountain peak experience. The joy wonder could be here. Here in the messy, piercing ache of now, joy might be unbelievably possible. While it may seem hard to make ourselves happy, it's not hard to choose to give thanks, which invariably kindles happiness. We can always list things we're grateful for and recite them to God. We can share them with friends and loved ones, including our children, grandchildren, or other relatives. No matter how difficult their circumstances, the happiness that comes with Thanksgiving is always within our reach. Always. Try it and see. No amount of regret changes the past. No amount of anxiety changes the future. Any amount of gratitude, great, or sorry, of grateful joy changes the present. Even if the worst suffering of our lives still lies ahead of us, our loving God assures us it will be for only a short time. Then either at Christ's return or at our death, our suffering will end forever. The, this eternal perspective, the constant awareness that we aren't living primarily for the here and now, but rather for the world to come, is something we desperately need. That's why Scottish evangel evangelist sorry, Duncan Matheson from 1824 to 1869 prayed, Lord, stamp eternity upon my eyeballs. Amen. When we have this eternal view, you guys, 
on our eyeballs every day that we are looking at and reassuring ourselves with it and going through everything with that eternal mindset, it makes a vast difference. Vast difference. As God's children, we should gratefully remind ourselves that our happiness is limited in the life to come. A normal day as resurrected people on the new earth will be incredibly better than the best day we have ever experienced here. Amen. Nancy Lee Dimas writes, the person who has chosen to make gratitude his or her mindset and lifestyle can view anything, yes, anything, through the eyes of thankfulness. The whole world looks different when we do. And that's what what is so hard because if you are still stuck and you're still struggling in this, it's because you're not trusting God. You're not giving it to him. There, there is literally no other reason. You have not put your full trust in the Lord and therefore making gratitude your mindset and lifestyle with an eternal focus. You have got to do it. Only you can do these things. Once we experience Thanksgiving as our default condition, we'll find it's inseparable from our happiness and we'll never want to go back to the barren wasteland of ingratitude. We will stop asking God, why have you done this to me? And instead, looking at Christ's redemptive sacrifice, we will ask God, why have you done this for me? May you and those you love have a happy, Christ-centered, full of gratitude Thanksgiving later this November when we get there. <laughs> so um, go ahead now, you guys. Come over and join me on the group. Of course, I post the study questions every day so you can share that. But let's really stop and watch ourselves today. Are you living with abounding gratitude in every situation? Or are you full of ingratitude? And let's go ahead and pull up the link here for the sermon uh, or the interview he did with Susie Larson. Um, and let's go ahead and listen to that, okay? As we're thinking about this and truly meditating on this topic of truly being gratitude, truly being grateful in all situations, even the stinky, awful ones, okay? So let's go look at these things. Come and join me over, share your um, responses there and kind of what is working and moving with you throughout all of this. And then I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys. Bye.